Hello and welcome to Project Home DIY. My name is Christine Bloat, the owner, founder, and curator of Project Home. Thanks for joining us this month where we get to use something very useful for all year round in our house, depending on the way that you choose to use it, which we've given you lots of options. And I'm so excited to get started on this one and especially excited to see how you guys create your one-of-a-kind home decor pieces. Make sure that once you become a part of Project Home DIY, you become a part of our VIP group on Facebook because then once this project is sent to everybody, we'll reveal the project around the middle of the month and you can add your very own creations to the album that we create for December's project. You can also go there for lots of inspiration on how to create the project and different ideas from many, many of our members. So make sure you join that. If you're brand new with us, welcome, glad to have you. Make sure you get out your starter kit. You're going to need the glue gun and definitely the sanding block. Those two things, the paintbrush, um, several other items that we do send you just so you have all the supplies and tools you need. Additional supplies necessary will be um, your paint or stain color of choice, um, different foliage if you choose anything else, um, anything else that you choose to customize. But other than that, you won't really need much extra to get this project complete other than what we've already provided you. So I'm gonna flip the camera around so you can see from a bird's eye view of how to put this together. Let's get started. Okay, now that you can see from up above, we're gonna get started. And the way I decided to finish my project this time is I like to, I wanna do one of my favorite techniques and that takes um, staining this wood first and then putting a whitewash over the top of it and then sanding it. So in order to do that, just depending on, let me get all this stuff out of here. Just depending on how you decide to finish your um, project, this may not be your first step, but for me, it's going to have to be just so I can let this stain set and um, then paint over it. So I have the, wood box right here and I'm going to stain it. I have my stain here. I'm using uh, Minwax um, aged barrel color to stain. Um, super simple process. I love staining. It's um, pretty user friendly, easy to do. Um, I do recommend gloves. I don't like to get stain in my hands. I have dry hands and so um, it just like soaks into them so i don't like having that but i'm gonna stain this first by mixing up my stain a little bit i just used this not very long ago but i do know this aged barrel it separates really bad so if it's light colored um let me try it first uh mm, nope that's not gonna be dark enough so i do need to stir that We'll go ahead and use the end of a paintbrush. And you will be amazed at how much stirring that pigment off the bottom will change the color of your stain, like dramatically. Yeah, use that end of a paintbrush. It's okay, let it dry, never even notice. But watch now. If I just take the same stain, I'm gonna put it on the backside. Not stirred stirred. Huge difference. Stir the stain. Very important thing to do. I did use it just a couple days ago, but clearly it separated. So the way I'm going to be doing this, oops, I better get a piece of paper out to cover my table. This paper comes in your boxes too. It's super handy to um, cover up your work area if you're staining or doing anything like this. But the way I'm going to apply this stain and then I will take, let it dry. That's why I'm applying the stain first. Because if I'm going to paint over it, it's going to need a minute to set up. So I want to make sure I give it that time to set up. I'm going to get down in there as far as I can. Um, if you notice parts of the box not staining, it could be because there's glue 
glue will obviously create a barrier between the stain. For my case, it doesn't really matter. And honestly, if it does happen, it would be in the middle. But since I'm painting over it, it won't matter. Okay, so I have a nice thin layer of stain on there. I just wipe it with a wet rag. And now I'm gonna set it in front of the heater to dry and get set up while I go back and build my round part. And then by the time I'm done with building the round part, I can stain it and then come back to this and paint my white on it for the antique finish. So let me go set this in the dryer. But let's get to building our round. So it's gonna take, let's see, the four mending plates, these guys, and the silver screws. So take your silver screws, the mending plates, um, white, or there's a clear protective film on one side of the mending plates. Just rub that off. This just keeps them nice so they don't get scratched in transit. So take that off. Then we're just going to take two pieces of the wreath. Front, back, they're the same. Doesn't matter which side you go with. But the important part is, is to keep them together. If you want and you have it, you can put wood glue in there. Um, I don't believe, I have hot glue, which all you guys do. Um, oh, it's a brand new glue gun. Never ran a stick through it. I don't believe if it's MDF, MDF is like, um, oh my, it doesn't want to go through. There we go. MDF is like a, a particle board. That's what this is made of. And it's kind of um, grainy, I guess you could say dusty grainy. So it doesn't really, it may not stick that hot glue, but I, it's a great way to be able to keep these two pieces together temporarily. It's not a final hold. You have to use the mending plates. But as I'm screwing these down, it's a fantastic way to keep those pieces together, but it's not super strong. So don't rely on it alone. Um, and all, again, since it is MDF, we did not pre-drill holes because it is pretty simple as I drop the screw to get that screw into that wood. It's not bad at all. If you have a drill, um, you can use a drill. That will make it even easier. If you have a ratcheting screwdriver, that will make it even easier. Because a ratcheting screwdriver, I don't have to lift my bit out of every time I need to turn it. I just ratchet. Pretty cool. Okay, I'm gonna keep the plate straight. And this is kind of, um, if I get my screw in there and I'm pushing down nicely, you can sort of hit on the top of that. Or if you have a hammer at a reach, just hammer that screw in. It helps get it started a little bit. Much easier if you get that screw started, okay? I'm terrible at screwing things in straight. So here I'm gonna come in with the ratcheting and get it flat. So that is solid, okay? Once we have that tad bit of hot glue to temporarily hold it, and then we get the mending plate on there and two screws, it is solid. So we're gonna complete or continue that step for all four pieces around.
Got the wreath all put together, the round whatever, wreath, whatever you want to call it. All put together, four mending plates, hot glue, temporarily worked awesome, worked like a charm. Um, everything's ready, good to go. Now, time to stain this. So I'm gonna put my staining gloves back on. <coughs> Okay, got my paper back out. My stain, it should still be stirred just enough. I'm going to stain this wood round. Wreath is stained, and you'll notice that the MDF area will take up a lot more um, stain or paint, whatever you used. Um, just gotta kind of rub it in there, and when I'm painting MDF with a paintbrush, I like to dab and stipple it in there because it really gets in there with the paintbrush much better. Um, the wood, or the round is all done. I'm gonna set that to the side in the dryer so it can dry. And I will get back to painting the wood block and then we'll get our jute going, put these side pieces on and almost finish our project. Paint. Oops. Paint it with a white paint. I just is just a general white paint. I would not suggest using the cotton paint from the kit because it's a little bit too thin for what I want um, as far as pigment coverage, but those paints are meant to be an antiquing finish um, if you weren't using like the dark underneath. So I'm gonna use just a regular paint that I have already, a latex. And yes, I said latex. I use house paint majority of the time. Number one reason why we use acrylic in our boxes is because it doesn't freeze. Um, and shipping, so that causes much less problems. Uh, latex paint, if it freezes, you know when your parents used to panic because they'd have to get the paint inside for winter. It's true, 100% true. Latex paint will freeze, so we don't send latex anymore. If I had my preference, we would definitely always use it latex, but I can't do it. Just a little bit of information for you. Regular wall house paint is my favorite to use. So this layer does not have to be super perfect because again, I'm going for the wood or the um, rustic look, the worn look. So the um, if it's put on pretty uneven, that's okay. And just give one quick over finish. You can see that's what the white looks like. This one looks funky because I laid it down on the paper. I don't want to drag it against an edge because then I leave a bump of paint. Oh, there's a brush, a bristle. Okay, now I paint my top. Now, honestly, probably just leave the inside of it dark. I'm not gonna paint white down in there. I'll just leave it dark. Okay. Okay, to move this, I'm just gonna put my fingers inside there and hold. I don't get any fingerprints on the outside. And set this in the dryer and it will be good. 
Let's go ahead and put these black pieces on. You're gonna have two shorter ones and one longer one. The longer one goes in the center and the shorter ones go at the top and the bottom where they fit, okay? So just keep that in mind. I'm noticing right here, this bottom one, um, I can see where my brackets are and I know that those are placed symmetrically. Those are placed in the same spot because of where the wood's cut, these pieces are the same. So I can base my um, straightness of the bar that I'm putting on off of those brackets. And I'm trying to go up as high as I can before I run out of room. <coughs> Excuse me with my cough. I've had a terrible cough. And then just take the black screws that are included and screw those brackets in place. So just make sure it's nice and level across the whole thing and then go ahead and screw it in. So I want to make sure that I keep it straight. If you want to make sure you're straight, take a tape measure and measure the distance between the two. That's right at five inches, and that's right at five inches. And to even do a better job than that, put one screw in, and then check your dimensions. Okay, so now it's stuck. There, I can bonk the tape up against it and I'm gonna move it so it's right at five inches and I'm gonna come down here and it's not quite at five. There's five. The brackets too. If you want these all evenly, evenly spaced, um, I'm not sure it's possible because I don't think this one is long enough to go across the center, but that allows you to hang larger things in the center and offset them just a little bit more. All three brackets are installed. <clears throat> if you want to use just two, you can use just two. The um, brackets definitely strengthen it. Two is totally fine as well. Hurt it one bit if you decide to use just two. Okay, now I can add in the, well, actually, before I do that, I'm going to put on the hardware for the hanging because I can see that these will be so um, it'll be much easier while my wreath has nothing on the front to install this, the D-ring bracket hangers. This is the cool thing about Project Home is we do include everything that you need. So you don't even have to go out and buy those extra D-ring hangers. Um, these D-ring hangers, just place them exactly straight across from one another. The reason why we need two, and you must use two and you can't just hang it in the middle, is because of the box. If you were to hang this on the wall, the box is weighted on one side if you have it offset. Um, if it's in the center, then it's fine. You would be able to do that, but this D-ring bracket's gonna be too big to hit, go right there also. But there's two because we can then, um, no matter what weight is on what side, it'll be even and straight. So just make sure that um, when you install these, that they are installed at the same um, level across, or else they, your sign may hang crooked.
Okay, now I can work on the jute. So the jute is used to um, just create a fun accent piece on your um, wreath sign, whatever we want to call this thing. And um, also just gives it a little bit more strength, although it's like definitely strong enough now, but just gives it a little bit more oomph and durability. So I'm just gonna cut some off of here. There's tons of jute, so don't be shy. I'm just gonna cut some off here. Okay, pay real close attention because this is one of my favorite tricks ever. And this is like one of those tricks where like at the Pinners conferences, I do classes and I'll teach this trick in there. And some people are like, that's it. This takes the weekend. If I take one thing away from this, this is it. This is the coolest. So here's my famous trick. Well, I'll show you two. I'll show you two of them because I'm going to have to use a new glue stick. So I'll show you two. But first trick. Okay, so I'm gonna work on covering this joint right here. I'm just gonna put some hot glue down. Mind you, I haven't used my hot glue in a few minutes. So I know that that little ball right there is super hot, right? Okay, well, I'm gonna put my end in that hot glue and I don't wanna sit here and wait for that to dry. I wanna be able to tug on that right now. I'm gonna lick my finger and I'm gonna put my finger right on it. And if it gets too hot, dab, your finger will not stick to the hot glue and it cools it much quicker. So look, now my string is in place. It's where I want it and it's secured. Now I can take this <clears throat> with these little cute bars on here. It's gonna be a little more challenging, but I can wrap my jute Okay, before I get too far ahead of myself, okay, this is the top. I did take, um, let's see, we do have the lamb's ear sprigs that mm, came with the kit. I love those, but I want to add a tiny bit of flair to them. Don't do that unless you want to wreck your scissors. I should have wire cutters, but I don't but that'll wreck your scissors. Um, but I took some bee or some berries and I sprayed them. They're just old berries that I had. And I'm gonna add a little tiny sprig of these to this eucalyptus just for a little pop. So I just cut those up. I'm gonna add it in there to the eucalyptus and I'm gonna hold it with one hand while I wrap the jute around. Woo! Double handing. Okay, I need to take more berries off because I need a little bit more room wrap that jute around. Again, if I need to use hot glue, I can glue those in there and I can see those are never gonna move. Just put some blobs of hot glue in there and I'm gonna run my twine over it. But you could swap these out seasonally if you want. Just add a fun little piece in there. Okay, I have just a tiny bit left. It won't make it to the back, so I'm gonna flip this around. Here I am with my last part of the string. I'm gonna put down some hot glue, put my string in it, lick my finger, dab. Lick it again, because that was pretty warm. Okay, there, now it's better. And Cut that off. And that finishes it nice and clean. There's one of them. Just perfect. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side. So the opposite corners over here, and I'm probably, hmm, I don't know. Maybe gonna have it go 
I should do opposite, all going one direction. Okay, here's my other sprig. There, those are put on there. I do see a tiny bit of this stem is left. I trim it off. Using the right tools, I have nippers. Those are handy. Okay, cool thing about floral, most of the time it has wire in it. You can bend it to fit where you want it to go. You can also put a little dab of glue where you need something to stay, and it will stay. Okay, for the box. Our last piece, this is my top, because I can see these are still here. I kind of like this one going wonky off of there. If you want it to follow the shape of the um, round, then just glue those, but I kind of like it flaring up. But the bud box, this is meant to be attached or not. So it's totally up to you how you want to do this, but I need to finish it first. Remember I stained it and now it has a white finish over it and I just want to sand off a little bit of that finish. And see that's why. Because I like that. the round, if you don't want to mount it, you don't have to. My thought on this was you can mount it so it can stay right there with it, um, put extra pieces and parts, oops, more like that. Definitely want it straight. Um, extra pieces and parts, like extra cards or the mail or you know what have, whatever you decide to use this for. Just even decor, floral in it. Um, add more pieces like this, you know, down in there um, for floral. <clears throat> you know, whatever you're going to do, you can mount this to the wood round or you don't have to. But a couple ways to mount it. This other one that I made previously, you can see it's all just wood hot glued on there and it totally holds just fine. So if you're okay with that, do it that way. Just hot glue it. Um, <clears throat> if it's going to set up, the cool thing about this, if the wood box is attached, this can actually just set on a end table or mantle piece or wherever. It doesn't have to hang, but it can also hang. Um, if you are gonna mount the box like this, set it flat on a table like we're doing Find the exact space area where you want it attached. If you want it all the way out here, if you want it kind of in, out, whatever, but make sure that you're even with your rods and then if you're gonna be even with your hanging mounting brackets as well. So I have it held in the right place and take my hot glue and actually I'm gonna put some underneath first. Hold that on there, make sure it's, yep, still good. And then I'm going to just run a huge bead of hot glue right along the back of that. If you wipe your hot glue head tip down on whatever you're working with <clears throat> and hot gluing, you'll avoid strings. So let me show this. This way, I'm just gonna run a nice bead of hot glue right along there. You can see I wipe my tip 
and get rid of the string. On another bead, just clean that up. And I'm not, right here, I'm not um, squirting any glue out. I'm just running the glue that's already there out. If you want to add the hanger, or the brackets to hold the box, I'm gonna set this tape measure underneath here so it quits falling over. Okay, these little brackets here are meant to be placed and they will hold the box on forever and ever. Okay, so that is what those L or I don't know, S shape, Z shape, whatever brackets are for. Just a little extra added strength. This will go nowhere. <clears throat> the screws aren't deep enough to penetrate through your wood box either. So you don't have to worry about that. See how handy a ratcheting screwdriver is? We need these in the Project Home store. I'll talk to the owner. Tell her to get this tool made. Okay, those brackets are awesome. That is attached and is not going anywhere. And I might as well just put this one on too. I have it. Okay, that is attached and not going anywhere. Oh my gosh. You know what I totally forgot till just now? The stencil. <clears throat> Oops. Okay, well, let's stencil. I'm probably not going to put any words on mine because I don't know my the use quite yet. But I do love this flower and <clears throat> many of you in the VIP group, again, if you're new, make sure you join that, have been very vocal, bless your little hearts, about getting the Project Home DIY flowers. And so we included some flowers in this month, so you can have those. But what I'm going to do with it is just put it around the side, just like that. Oh, I should explain a little bit about these stencils if you haven't used them yet, I'm sorry. Okay, these are mesh reusable stencils. Remember back in the day, or even yesterday when you were using vinyl and transfer tape, this takes place of both of those things. We don't need vinyl and transfer tape. This is one and all item. It has mesh like a screen and will allow paint to go through these open mesh areas. The only areas it will allow it to go through. It is reusable, so once I'm done with it, I can wash it and reuse it again and again. So that is super cool. Um, actually, I kind of want to replace it and do it this way. Yeah. Okay, so just take your, cut out the piece that you want to use, place it, remove the backing, place it on whatever you're using, whatever you're painting. So in this case, it's our block. If you are rounding a corner, just be mindful that this could leak in between here, but there, I'll show you an easy way to clean that up. I kind of don't want this to show up very much on here. So I'm going to use just our cream color and paint over it. So then you just paint over it like that. I'm gonna check. That's exactly what I wanted. Okay. Yep, that's the color. Kind of like, um, I love black on black, white on white. I love those kind of patterns and prints. Love, love them. Okay, so now I can see over here. This is cream. It's in your set of 10 colors that come with the first subscription box of yours. Okay, now 
just remove and pull that stencil right off of there. This can be washed. Wash it off. Don't crumple it up when you're washing it. Um, and just remove it and put it face down and um, let it dry. Okay, that is the flower. I shouldn't be sanding right now, but I am. Because I noticed my stencil pulled up a little bit. It's because I did the, the staining first, but look at that. Like a ghosted flower on there and it is so pretty. Yep, wrapped around the edge, love it. Just something super simple and pretty. So that is how you stencil. You can do two different, um, if you choose not to attach your block, your box, um, you can put photos on one side, mail on the other and flip it um, and use it different times of the year, whatever you choose to do. But that is the finished December 2022 project. So thank you for joining me. This is our finished project, all nice and ready, perfect for the holidays and all year round, depending on what usage you choose it for. But look how beautiful. So enjoy and thanks for joining me. See you next month. Bye.